So this morning we left out of uh, Plymouth Harbor, which is about 20 miles south of the busy port of Boston. And we left in, uh, came out about 17 nautical miles until we got out here. So we're running around 10 knots uh, due to right whale season. So it took us a little over an hour and a half, to almost two hours to get out. Uh, and really where we came today was the southwest corner of the sanctuary. Um, so today we have a bunch of different projects going on, but uh, in part the thing that's all brought us together is just trying to understand forage fish, and particularly the sand lance, uh, or sand eels as the fishermen like to call them. Uh, sand lance, they're uh, about uh, this long and can be a little bit thicker or thinner than my pinky, and they're the main forage species for whales, seabirds, and other fish. But they are threatened by uh, man made, human induced pressures. As some people know, the Gulf of Maine, which is where Stellwagen Bank is, is experiencing some of the largest changes in climate, um, especially when it comes to ocean temperatures. Uh, we're having warming um, almost more than anywhere else in the world right now. And what that could mean for very uh, finicky sand lands as to where they want to be uh, due to ocean temperatures could really change. And so you, if you wiped out the sand lands on Stellwagen, it's not like you could just go off Stellwagen and find sand lands. They're really highly concentrated on Stellwagen and only one or two other places in the Gulf of Maine. And so they're very important for everything that comes here to feed on. Um, we can see a collapse of uh, different types of fish. We can certainly see a lot less whales uh, move offshore in the, as well as the seabirds that are here. Uh, we really don't uh, know what would actually happen. Uh, it's certainly something that we're working on very hard to figure out, but it would certainly be, uh, we believe, disastrous. Sand lance are a really tricky fish. We're starting this project because, hey, they're really hard to catch and study, and there's not a lot known about them, uh, even though they might arguably be the most important species that we have in the sanctuary. Uh, we have people involved in the project from uh, the University of Connecticut, uh, USGS down in Woods Hole. Uh, we also have um, some folks involved from Boston University, and the list goes on and on and on. <laughs> But when you bring in scientists that have all sorts of different interests from uh, the geologists with their focus on the sediments and the sand grain, uh, to the plankton, to the sort of the adult fish ecologists, um, you kind of get, you start to get a much clearer picture of what's going on. hard when you're out here on the water sometimes to think about what's below us so this is our only way to be able to feel back the water and look and see what the surface sort of looks like at the, at the bottom. And it's not just helping sand lands, it's, it's helping the entire ecosystem. If you care about whales, you should care about sand lands. If you care about bluefin tuna, you should care about sand lands. If you care about birds, beautiful puffins for example, you should care about sand lands. Everything has to eat, and if something happens to their prey, their food, then you're really affecting that, that species. If sand lance were uh, kind of on their own, doing their own little thing without anything eating them, we probably wouldn't care about them. Uh, but they're so important in the ecosystem that we, that we have to care about.